Very nice. The, one of the largest bird nests in the world. 7,000 for the white one. So like the black ones, this can be uh, 2 to 2.5 thousand ringgit Malaysia per kilo. So this is the, the sign. Back, back, back. So it does the same thing as the other one. So the bats are all leaving now and the hawks are waiting for them. They're all flying out of that entrance. And they're going to get picked off. My name is Baharudin bin Rasak. Uh, I am, and my nickname is Budin. Uh, I am research assistant in Darabang Jawa. Macam biasa kan? Boleh ya? Okay. He said he chose to stay in the forest. <laughs> he like forest because if he uh, stay in the forest, he like hard work. He can more get uh, some like hard work, some get some more money from forest and river. If you stay in a plantation, nothing I can do. Thank you. Thank you. So we're on our way into the plantation to walk around. Joseph, what's a wildlife corridor? I think a wildlife corridor is a, a stretch of land. Let's say forest. Say if you have a forest in one part and there are animals, and then like there is a plantation or a settlement of people in this part, and then there is another uh, pa patch of forest. So if you create a small stretch through this settlement or plantation to connect the two forests and this stretch is also forest that would be a corridor, a wildlife corridor so that animals can be able to connect from that patch to the other one So they will come and eat this instead of the plantation? Yeah okay. That makes sense Why is the plantation uh, replant this space? So you plant it outside? Uh, on the corridor On the corridor, okay Tindi kan kampang, kerja kerja mana? Saya sebagai head mandula ini kawasannya. Si sa head or leader of the workers plantation. New project from this combined joint company and forestry department. We plant a new forest just in the middle of the plantation. We try to explain to get seed seed tree, mm -hmm. take in from the forest and then grow in the plantation. Oh, this okay. idea. Ah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 But some animal yeah, yeah. secrets. <laughs> will there will there be a way in and out to connect? Will there be corridors? Yeah, it's there a connect will be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, But starting from the middle, the plantation, and then go to Working. connect. Nice, okay. <laughs> nice. Please invite us to walk look so. around the, the, ah. the plantation. What we don't have time. <laughs> right. We don't have time. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, okay. We'll come back. Okay. Okay. Next yeah. time, yeah. Yeah. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Okay, so my name is Rob and I'm a PTY student at Cardiff Uni. So a PTY is a professional training here. Every day that I've been here, like something, no matter how trivial it is, has made me go wow, which is really cool. I mean, whether it's just the, the sheer power of the thunderstorms or uh, just the fact of seeing monkeys every day, I've, you know, I've still not got used to that and I've been here a year now. Um, it's just incredible and especially with the work I'm doing, I'm doing the camera trapping, funded partly by Phoenix Zoo. 
and um, just incredible because it's like having 20 different people at different parts of the forest 24 7 always taking pictures for you so it's you're really getting to see what is out there when you're there and scaring all the animals away the whole point of the sanctuary is to provide a link between uh, the forest mangroves that are on the coast to the forests that are on the uh, inland of Saba. Um, so they're trying to establish corridors between all of the, um, uh, the different lots because at the moment the sanctuary is really, really fragmented. Uh, for instance, lot 6 is uh, 26 square kilometres, which is smaller than most American cities. Um, and uh, that's it, there's nothing, uh, there's, no, there's no connectivity at all for any wildlife to move through. Um, it's just totally surrounded by palm oil on all sides apart from the river. The wildlife uh, uh, sanctuary is made to try and combat that sort of uh, fragmentedness and to, like I say, link up the forest in between um, uh, the heart of Borneo, or the heart of Sabah and the coast. So, and, and my impression is that the locals seem to be uh, getting really on board. So. Okay. When the, the plantations were made, the government signed off a lot of land to the plantations and now the only way to um, get that land back is for the plantation owners to either give it back, which can sometimes happen, uh, as Ben was saying, uh, because of like reduced crop effectiveness uh, closer to the river, or uh, for charities to buy the land back. And that's, that's the biggest challenge because palm oil is so valuable, it's so good for Malaysia's economy that it is so valuable and the land is very, very expensive. My name's Andy Mack. I'm a tropical biologist. I'd worked in the lot in Central America and South America before I came here, and it's sort of, even having seen those rainforests, this one sort of knocked my socks off. And so I can't describe, if you're not familiar with rainforests at all, it's, it's like trying to describe redwoods to someone who's not seen them. You know, it's just really, really big trees. And they say, yeah, okay, you know, I, I've seen a big tree in my backyard. And it's like, no, this is, this is different. Um, and, you know, to be in a place where, uh, you know, we catch cicadas and know they're undescribed species and finding birds in areas that we didn't know where they existed. And, you know, it's just all, everything's in time in the forest every day is a sense of discovery of, of a magnitude that we're not familiar with in the U.S. You, how many of us every day just see things that were totally new to us and you go, oh my gosh, you know, it's like, what is that? You know, it may happen once or twice a year or something happens, you go, but it's like when you're in this forest, it's like around every bend, there's like something that's like, what is that? Even when I study it my entire life, I'm still going, what is that? You know? Did you ever think that it would get to the point where it is now, where so much of the forest was Yeah. Gone? In fact, I was sure it would happen. These, tr This is such valuable timber. I mean, tropical forests in general are very diverse, and there's there may be 5 6% of the trees are really good timber. Here it's 60% or something, these different parts, and they're massive. The trucks that they use were so large, they're illegal in the U.S. on an interstate. You know, they're, they're like a lane and a half wide, and they had to be that big just to haul these trees. They put four bowls, maybe five, in the back of one of these trucks, and you climb up on a ladder to get in, it's massive things. And it's like, these things are just so valuable, and we knew they are going to go. Of. Um, I'm afraid of the crocodiles <laughs> that eat people. They've eaten 12. And as you're telling us, you're not paying attention and you're getting out of the boat. And they ambush. They're ambush predators, so it's about to jump <laughs> up and eat me. Wait for me. And we're learning about primate conservation and ecology. 
but we're also learning about how to engage um, zoo visitors in the United States. When the tourists come in here, automatically they get involved. How they get involved? When they staying at the homestay, I mean, staying with us, they also can teach the kids to speak English. Yeah, you can call me Arni. We share the information about the forest and anything about conservation program with the school. This is your area here. Yeah? So for the next dragonfly, we'll uh, use this area until full. This is specialist for the uh, dragonfly activities. For the, it's a dragonfly tree here. Okay. So everyone, we love our tree. I'm gonna give it a nice hug. Good luck. <laughs> You see all the cola, the elephants, huh? It's a cola, so it's uh, for the trek, for the wildlife departments and for the elephants conservation unit. Know where they are always. So just for the study, the movement. I just see that teeny tiny little ear. Do you want to touch him? No, I think we're too close. Look at him, look at him. 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 I'm out of here, people. I am just out of here. It's got to be so hard for him to get out. Oh, I hope he gets out okay. <laughs> Getting out through the mud. Kind of like me yeah, yesterday. My name is Arnina Tanya and I'm working with UNIT uh, Hutan Environmental Awareness Program project. To, uh, in our unit, we go to schools to give them uh, to to teach the children about the environment and even the forest. This village, they have a very very awesome. Uh, but a culture because they they have in their self that they need to conserve the the forest around them because they need to not on they need to communicate with the the what, the wildlife mm -hmm. they can get economy from them by tourism by control my name is Azri uh, I'm local from Sukau so I have been work with uh, Penabatangan Orangutan Conservation Project since 1998. People can change, especially uh, in terms of their attitudes, but it take time actually. And I, I have an example myself because uh, I, I did a lot of uh, bad things, especially damaging the environmental, uh, killing animals for leg hunting when I was, uh, you know, teenagers. And then uh, I follow my friends, uncle, going to the forest, cut down trees for logs. But after I joined uh, this project, and I more, uh, what you call that, uh, more involved and more exposed to conservation efforts. And then day by day, uh, year by year, I think starts. This is time I have to pay all these things that I did last time ago. So I thought I did.
since now, until now. Yeah, thank you. Mm. you know, we love the elephant, but if we not protect them or chase them, probably they will die. In 2002, the first Korea CCU, Korea, we used this and 100 percent um, perfect. perfect. They not come. Okay. In 2005, yeah. <laughs> we realized yeah. when everyone, when ECU teach people how to make this cannon with the carbine, use this cannon to chase elephant. I saw the very last part. Yeah. Yeah. This is way easier than I thought. Yeah, they've got it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's also a beautiful right. butterfly flying by, too. I'm going to explode it. Did you give it one? Selamat malam. Terima kasih pada Stephanie. Ya. Terima kasih. Thank you. So, Mr. Rob said thank you for Stephanie to give the, uh, us the kids for India families. <laughs> they are very friendly. Friendly is they not too much uh, thinking about anything that they are really... It's, everything is always alright. <laughs> <laughs>